Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Miss Skoken. We're back in Chapter 4, Triangle Congruence. This time we're taking a look at two new postulates, the side-side side and the side-angle side postulate. Our objectives for the section are apply SSS and SAS to solve problems and prove triangles congruent using SSS and SAS. For vocabulary, we've got triangle rigidity and included angle. Our first warm-up question asks us to name the angle formed by ray AB and ray AC. We can name that angle more than one way. We can call it angle BAC, or we can call it angle CAB, or because there are no other angles involved that are adjacent to angle A, we can call it angle A also. Question two asks us to name the three sides of triangle ABC. The triangle has three sides, so the first one is segment AB, the second side of the triangle is segment BC, and the third segment of the triangle is segment AC. Any of these can be written in the opposite order, so uh, segment AB is the same as segment BA, and so on. Question number three asks us to name all the pairs of congruent corresponding parts for triangles, congruent triangles, QRS and LMN. So we know that angle Q is congruent to angle L, remember order matters, angle R is congruent to angle M, and angle S is congruent to angle N. Now it's time for the sides. Segment QR is congruent to segment LM. Segment RS is congruent to segment MN. And segment QS is congruent to segment LN. That's it for our warm-up questions. So what we're going to do is take a look at our first postulate, the side-side po side postulate. And this says... If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles have to be congruent. And the easiest way to think about this is imagine you have three different sticks. And no matter how many times you try to rearrange them, basically you're only ever going to be able to come up with one unique triangle. So that's our side, side, side postulate. And we're going to use that to do some problem solving. Example number one says, using side-side-side to prove triangle congruence. We have a figure that is made up of, it looks like two triangles side-by-side side sharing a common side. And what we want to do is use side-side-side side to explain why triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC. We notice that we have some tick marks in the diagram, so the first thing that we're going to do is write down the information that has been given to us by the diagram. And so we know that segment AB is congruent to segment DB. We also know that segment AC, and we're on the two tick marks now, is congruent to segment DC. And by the reflexive property, we can name that third side side BC or segment BC is congruent to itself segment BC and this gave us our side 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 so that means we have proven that the triangles are congruent and we can write the tr congruency statement triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC by the side-side-side postulate of congruence. We have a little reminder. Remember that adjacent triangles share a side, so you can apply the reflexive property to get a pair of congruent parts. All right, let's move on. The next item says an included angle is an angle that is formed by two adjacent sides of a polygon. And when we look at this triangle, we see that we have two sides, segment AB and segment BC, that create this angle B. 
And that is called the included angle because it is formed by the two segments. That brings us to the next postulate, which says if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. When we name a triangle using all three angles or all three point names, for instance, this one, which is angle A, we could call this one angle C, A, B. Notice that the A is in the middle. It is the vertex and the two points C and B are not the vertex. When we talk about the side angle side postulate of congruence, we're looking at in order, side, the adjacent angle, and then the other side that creates that angle. So just want to be clear on that. If you need some help, uh, ask in class. Otherwise, definitely review this. And we're going to now take a look at example two. Example two says using side angle side to prove triangle congruence. The diagram shows part of the support structure for a tower. Use side angle side to explain why triangle XYZ is congruent to triangle VWZ. We notice immediately that we have some tick marks in our diagram, and so we know that we've got some congruent segments. So let's write down what information has been given to us. To start with, we know that segment XZ is congruent to segment VZ. We also have a pair of segments that have two tick marks, and we know then that those are congruent to one another. Segment YZ is congruent to segment WZ. Okay, that has given us another side. Knowing that we want to use side angle side to prove triangle congruence, we need the included angle, which of course is the one that is formed by these two sides. And it just so happens that we have vertical angles, so we know that angle XYZ is congruent to angle VZW. That means that we have our side, our angle, and our side. So we have proven that triangle XYZ is congruent to triangle VWZ by the side angle side postulate of congruence. That's it for the notes and it's time for you to work on your practice problems for homework. Definitely bring any questions that you have to class. See you in class.